Good morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am joined with the mountain boy. This is Austin. You can also find him at Bigger Than Autism. Uh, he has a page on Facebook, and his website is in the works. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here in northern Idaho, and we could not be stuck inside uh, while recording this, so we ventured out here. I think my equipment will hold up. I can see some of you are joining me there. Hey, good morning, Chad. Good morning, good morning. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hopefully you don't have lots of feet of snow that you're dealing with right now. I know Montana got, was, parts of Montana got really hammered with snow this past weekend. We got flurries, but it is just, the temperatures are beautiful. It was 28 degrees this morning, and uh, it's just nice and crisp. It's like that perfect hunting season weather. Can you see I'm getting ready? I'm like really excited. But I'm, I'm sort of disappointed this year because I'm not gonna have my hunting partner. My partner in crime, good morning, Miss Shelley. My partner in crime got some amazing news on Monday. Good morning, Angela. So I thought I would let him share all of his good news and what he's got going on and where he's going and the, the, the skinny. He's gonna share the skinny with you. <laughs> What's so, skinny about? <laughs> Austin's literal mind. I was waiting for that. Very nice. Very nice. It's actually very robust, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't have enough coffee yet. Can you tell? Yep. All right. So why don't you share, um, first of all, where are you going? I'm going to Job Corps Fort Simcoe. Okay. And what are you going to be doing there? working on the big engine repair and doing driving the big machinery okay and also getting involved in diesel yeah and possibly automotive yeah we'll have to see about that well as far as the automotive goes you'll be doing automotive at a diesel aspect of things yeah and a big rig aspect like an 18 wheeler aspect Right, and, and the big equipment. And, and Chad is all too knowing of that stuff too because Chad has a business in Utah um, working on, on uh, big equipment as well. So if you are looking for somebody that is in Utah for big equipment repair, check out Vandal Services. Um, very reliable personnel there. <laughs> Chad says, praise the Lord. Let's see, Diane. Good morning, Miss Diana. Oh, good morning, Miss Rachel. So, we have we had some other crazy stuff go on. Um, I'm going to share this in the midst because then you'll understand when he shares the rest of this. Um, I shared with you guys a couple weeks ago and and last week that God has told uh, had told us to wait. I hear you, long lost friend. I know it's been crazy. We've been both going in wild directions. But God told us to wait. God gave the mountain man Hebrews 6.15 one morning, and I turned to my devotions, and it was on the same subject, same verse. So, you know, God was telling us to wait. So we waited. And what was really funny is when people, we had two, two showings, um, one two Sundays ago, and... Um, when we got the phone call that there was somebody coming to look at the house, we both just looked at each other and kind of dumbfounded because God told us to wait. So our mindset was to wait. And we, we switched gears and we started getting ready for winter here, assuming we would be here for winter. winter. And <laughs> hush up. <laughs> and I don't really know, you know, we don't know what God's going to do, but we are fully, faithfully trusting him. Good morning, Miss Kelly. And um, we got a phone call Friday. Somebody wanted to come look at our house. This person was very aggressively looking. They gave us a verbal offer on Sunday. And uh, I believe it was just to feel us out. But um, this person needs to sell their home. And it is uh, going in under contract. His home is probably on Friday. So we were told that we should be expecting a written a written contract coming so um, this is just amazing news and you know sometimes I think God tests our faithfulness and I think maybe that's you know I don't I don't know what the full outcome is gonna be here because we can't see that far ahead 
but we are totally trusting God. Whether we are here for winter, whether he is going to deliver us from this three-year situation, it's in his hands. But the thing is, when he told us to wait, we, we did nothing more than just stop and wait. We, we are waiting on him. And it was, it's just been an absolutely wild ride since Friday. How about it? Yeah. Mountain Ben came to visit. And good morning, Miss Tammy. And he was here for the weekend, so that was a pleasantry. And uh, long overdue. And uh, it's just been wild and crazy. So Monday, because of offers coming in, if this were to sell, and there's snow in the forecast last weekend, you know, we we're looking to get an early winter. We have a lot of things on the ground here that need to be moved and to be gotten out of here. Um, they will be going to our future building site. So our gears have changed and we are at least getting those things up and out of the way so that we don't have to dig them out of snow and try to find things. Um, so Monday was a work day and we were racing around. The mountain boy is selling his camper his truck and his and his van because uh, he will be gone for two years plus depending on how things go for him he may they may opt to continue his schooling there um, so we know for sure it's a two-year process a two-year program but that could change so no sense letting his equipment sit around for that long um, He's opted to sell those and save that money so that when he is finished with the schooling, he can just purchase some nice wheels and get himself a place and have a good job. So so I'll let you tell this now. Pick up and tell what happened Monday afternoon. <laughs> so I went into my room to look at my messages and saw that Fort Simcoe messaged and then we both didn't react to it <laughs> at all. It was really funny. He said, yep, they re they responded. I leave on the 8th. And I was sitting on a couch listing some of his things, and he came and plopped down next to me. And there we sat, just totally dumbfounded. <laughs> and, you know, he's so excited to go. And we've been waiting for that call, but it's just, it's like everything has been happening so fast, like such a whirlwind. And... And it was just it was just really funny because we were expecting it, but we weren't expecting it to be that soon. Like they said, it would be a month or two before he was admitted, and um, once they confirmed that he, his admission, it would be a one or two week time frame till he needed to report there. Well, that was no two weeks. <laughs> it is a week though. It is a week. So, so he leaves Tuesday. So yeah, we were pretty dumbfounded. It took a little for it to sink in and he walked away and had to run downstairs for something and on his way down I hear this, woohoo! <laughs> it set in, it sunk in. So so this is just tremendous. It took a while to sink in. <laughs> yeah, so we have a good laugh anyway as to just hanging out here and sitting there and realizing all the realities of our faithfulness and and that's pretty much what it comes down to and i thought today would be a great day to talk about that um this guy here has seen us and walked through our journey with us and has seen firsthand you know we share very transparently with you guys but this guy here has has seen the good, the bad, the ugly, the super ugly. <laughs> the terrifically ugly. Yeah, it's just been, you know, it's been pretty raw. And, and for me, you know, I, I, f I focus on the positive. I focus on trusting God. I focus on his word. I focus on, on him and keeping my family moving in a good, healthy manner. Um, but you don't realize how, um, how our kids are viewing our hardships and I'd love for you to share what you've witnessed what you what how this three year situation has touched you in in all different aspects you know I know with my illness what was that like for you pretty hard yeah and just the unknown yeah yeah and then with our financial situation, you know, 
like I said, I try to keep our family running smoothly and and try to keep our home an optimistic place, even though there are hard times. You know, we don't have to dwell on the hard, and I don't think that that was something that you experienced very much. No, not really. But you had shared some things with me the other yesterday, and it, it really made me think about, you know, how you were viewing all of this. So one of the things you said is that you'll be really excited when we are able to get out of this place and, and these weights are gone. Mm -hmm. And and you said too for yourself that you'll be glad when you can go up to Fort Simcoe and not have to worry about us. Mm. Yeah. So through this process, has it what has it been like for you with us being under those weights? Crazy. Yeah. What kind of emotions did it stir? Mm. It just just crazy emotions. <laughs> crazy emotions. Well, how did it? How did it make you feel? Um, I know many times you've said you wish there were things you could do to help us, and and there were plans you had come up with to try to help us financially and things. Mm. So does it? Did it leave you feeling kind of helpless? A little. Yeah. You know, and and those are things. As good as you try to make things. When you're going through the hard stuff, you know, that's one thing that we've always got to consider is what everybody else is going through. And and he and I, you and I have such a really good open relationship and we've talked about a lot of things and, and that door has been open, but um, that was the first that you had shared that aspect and that part of it with me, yeah. that it was hard to watch us struggling. Yeah. But while we were struggling, did you see a lot of pluses? Yeah. What were they? That we were still in the house, still in the warmth. Okay. That's certainly a plus. <laughs> Didn't really have to worry too much about it. Right. Right. What else? What about how how we focused on things and handled things? How did how did that make you feel and what did you see? Happy, I guess. That you were handling it so well. Okay. And Since where it was hard. Yeah. And um, where did you see us seeking our guidance from? God. Has that empowered you? Yeah, it has. That's been pretty awesome. And there's been so much growth, our closeness with God. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. For yeah. all of us, each individual, yeah. you know, we all go through things, we all handle things differently, we all process things differently, and and seek him in different ways too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mountain man's walking over there. Let's see here. Shelly says, you are truly blessed to be able to get on to, into this education path, Austin. I'm sure you will shine. Your future is golden. <laughs> That's Shelly. She's the one from Canada. And Chad says, great leader. And, you know, I couldn't help but talk about our faithfulness today and the rewards that come with it because during this three-year period, there was a couple times, and as Austin would say, a couple is two. That's just his humor. Um, and it was too. There were two different times where we seeked our, you could say, spiritual advisors for. You're stepping on your wire so you don't pull it down. Okay, thank you. Um, for some heavy things we were experiencing. And we felt God was telling us things in certain ways, but we felt pressured by the world. I guess, and and other people's opinions, and we made bad choices. And from those moments on, we realized that from now on, we can seek guidance, but we can feel and we can communicate with the Holy Spirit. We know what that 
feels like. We know that for certain now. And from that point on, we chose regardless what the rest of the world thought. We needed to seek Him and seek His will. And in doing so, um, we've lost friends, we've lost connection with people, we've, we've had a lot of naysayers, we've had many people that have said that we should, have, we should be filing bankruptcy. Um, but we know wholeheartedly in our hearts that we have been following God's will through this. And that as we have been following God's will through this, God has been tremendously blessing us with fulfilling our needs as we need things. And it has been pretty, it's been absolutely amazing. You've witnessed so much crazy stuff in that regard as to how God has been just like faithful and blessing us yeah. and how doors just start flying open when it's his time, right? Because we've been seeking lots of things for quite a while, and you know the doors weren't opening, but there is so much power and and so much amazingness involved when God's timing is of the essence. Can you not do that because you're pinching my leg in the swing? <laughs> um, I didn't know. It. Not to mention, we're probably making them dizzy as we're going back and forth. So, <laughs> um, Chad says, I have tooling info for you guys to check into for Austin. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, he's actually one of the things that he is considering when he's out of school is um, being independent. Uh, ind having an independently owned business and um, being mobile to be able to fix the big rigs that um, and the big equipment that fail up on top of some of the most amazing mountainsides. So mm -hmm. just have to see what God does there. And yeah, that's, that's one of his prayers right now, but we'll just see how that transpires. But, um, but it's just been amazing to see what happens and, and to be stepping into God's timing. And um, Tammy and Kelly and Shelly and Diana have, and, and Chad, I've been in communication with these guys pretty regularly through this because they're my heavy prayer warriors, uh, some of them, and uh, they've seen this all unfolding, and it's been pretty wild, to say the least, to see how God has just th thrown the doors wide open. So we will continue to report in on all this stuff. Um, Austin and I have a road trip on Tuesday. Road trip, road trip, <laughs> road trip. Uh, he has to be there at five o'clock on Tuesday evening. So we are going to leave early and go check out the entire area and uh, do some hiking and just spend the day together. Uh, I think that was the biggest shocker for us both. Um, it's not that we're codependent, but we do enjoy each other's company. We are pretty uh, in tune with each other after all we've been through the, all these years. And um, it'll just be something new for us. So to be able to spend that day together will be absolutely awesome. And I'm sure comforting for you. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been on your own already. So, you know, as much as I know you have, you know, I don't want to say worry or anxiety, just... It's something new, so it, it just um, is new. You don't know what you're, what you're walking into there, but uh, I think you're much more prepared than you realize you're going to be. Hopefully. <laughs> Let me see here. Somebody else said some things. Um, okay. Angela said, I was expressing some regret about some things to an adult daughter, mainly not properly teaching kids how to keep the house clean. And she interrupted me and warned me against regret and blaming myself. She said, I tried, and each kid was their own person making own decisions. Absolutely. Absolutely. All we can do is do our best. Um, and, and, you know, we are always going to be our biggest critics. And right there is where the enemy seeps in and sits on our shoulder and lets us think, otherwise of ourselves when we know much greater. Um, raising children is an absolute gift and it is also an absolute challenge and um, uh, all of us, moms and dads, go to bed at some point, if not many, 
you know, feeling guilty or uh, poorly about a day's happenings, questioning our abilities, questioning uh, what we do. And you know what? The enemy just seeks that and looks for that. And, and you know, all we can do is do the best that we can, raise them up properly. Uh, just like it says in the Bible, you know, we raise them up properly and we raise them up in the word, you know, it will stick. It will stick. And, and you know what? Everybody learns at their own pace too. And as kids, we can all relate even as being them at one point, you know, that we rebel. We don't, you know, we, we don't want to learn things that someone else is teaching us, but we, we do as the process goes through and we do walk away learning those skills, even though we may not look like we want to, or that we are, you know, so the more we instill in our children, the more efforts we make, the more attempts we make, you know, the better off they will be. But like you said, each of our children are so different. Um, they react different. They behave different. They learn different. Um, and all we can do is just keep teaching and trying and loving. And, and that's where it's at. And, you know, your daughter's right because those anything negative is the enemy and we've just got to learn to discern that and learn to be willing to flip it as soon as it starts because there's nothing good that'll come of it um, let me see here okay uh, Chad says look back when he w whoop he was in that small engine job God planned it out already stay faithful I know isn't it awesome it's so awesome and it's so awesome the way everything rolled and the, all the opportunities he had in between and the maturity in between and it, God has purpose in absolutely everything and it's so funny you say that Chad because I've been thinking that myself it's just so awesome you know God God has purpose in everything this three-year process there was purpose in every aspect of it. And, and you know, I'm so thankful that we've shared this with you guys because I, I have to imagine in the transparency that you've seen so much. And I hope and pray that it's touched and helped others that are going through similar situations because everything we walk through, we have a choice. And, and we have a choice how to react, how we how we grow from it, how we move forward from it, or how we say stay stuck, stay stuck in it. <laughs> that was way too fast. Um, so there's so much to learn in life, so much to gain in life, and and so much opportunities for growth in life. And everything we walk out, you know. If we learn to view it that way, instead of viewing it as the, a hardship or a struggle or I wish I wouldn't have a regret, if you will, that you had to go through it, um, there's purpose in it all. There's so much purpose in it all. And Shelly was replying to Angela. She said, your daughter is wise. We can only do what we can do. No regret is allowed. Amen. Amen. Shelly says, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. Amen. And you know what? You hit that point with, with anything or anybody um, right there. We have a choice. You know, you can't do any more. So there's where you walk away and you pray that, you know, God works in them to put effort forth if effort is needed. Um, but we have to feel confident that we got them to that place, that we did our best, and it's now in their, their court and in their hands. And sometimes that can be hard. But I, I am really thankful for this guy. He has added so much to my life. Um, helping him to progress in life has been my biggest blessing. And to see him at this point and to see the opportunities like he said to me yesterday I hope you're gonna be able to be okay through all this and I said you know what I said I am going to definitely miss you but I will be so thankful and and just so proud of you for the opportunity that you have and all I can do is just pray for you for success and for God's hand on you and for the opportunity for you to reach other people while you're going through this and, and just what God is going to do. It's just so exciting and it's so awesome. It's so, so awesome. 
Let's see here. Uh, God makes God makes the change. Absolutely, we can't change people, and and when we hit that, I mean, y you can try. It's going to be the most miserable thing you have ever attempted to do because you won't succeed. We are not meant to change people. We are meant to love people, and and if they need help, we pray for God to work in them, soften their hearts, help them with their addictions, their struggles, their their stubbornness, whatever the case may be, but we aren't we are not here to change people. Uh we are here to love and to lead, you know, through our actions and through our 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 the way we live our lives. And 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 that's so important for us to know that. You know, the biggest and most powerful thing we have is faithfulness and prayer. And, and and diving into God's word. The gospel is so powerful. There is so much to be gained in reading the Bible every day. All right, let me see here. But I personally am not good at managing it all, so there's something, sometimes chaos around us. I'm so excited for Austin. You know what, though? With that, with that Angela... We all have high points, and, and being able to incorporate other people's talents um, can sometimes help us to manage things better. So, you know, you your high point might be something else. So incorporating somebody else into your day-to-day. -day. Maybe one of your children are really good at scheduling. You know we need to learn to incorporate each other's talents into our day-to-day -day, um, because through doing that it makes us not only strong but it, it makes us a pretty a pretty solid unit where we can share our talents to manage um, where my talents stop the mountain man's pick up and and the mountain boys pick up so we all complement each other and incorporating each other's talents into things and and um, Bringing our chaos to a peace by doing so can be really amazing. So don't cut yourself short because that isn't your superpower. You know, your superpower, whatever it may be, sh I'm sure shines. So do one of your kids have the ability to manage and, and organize? Because um, managing happens to be one of my superpowers. Um, it's not one of yours, right? organization really. or your dad's so you know such so I don't know I don't I don't know if someone else in your in your um, home is good at that but maybe incorporating that into the big scheme of things um, may may bring peace to your chaos it's hard though uh, you know um, we all bring different personalities different superpowers uh, different abilities to the table. It's just a matter of learning how. You're gonna make them dizzy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Am I making you dizzy? Yeah, now? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't do good in circles. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Him and his long legs. His that. legs are on the floor. My little stubby legs are hanging here off the swing. If it wouldn't be for the stump under my feet, I wouldn't. I wouldn't I'm have... using the stump. Oh, right? is that what you were using? <laughs> All right, wait. I'm trying to get to the screen. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> Kelly says and good morning Miss Kelly. God's timing revealed in your lives. What a blessing. I know. It's just oh gosh, it's been so amazing. So amazing and it's really funny. We don't experience fear and worry anymore. And our circumstances because we are so faithful has has brought on a feeling of numbness. Not not a bad feeling of numbness, not a good feeling of numbness. Just that we trust. I don't know how to explain it. It's just such a weird feeling. It's it's like it's like everything that we're experiencing is so surreal, and uh, we just kind of roll with it. Thank goodness. Uh, thank goodness I am organized because I don't know how we would pull all this off. Because as organized as I am, my head is spinning. The other day, the mountain man was saying something to me, and all I could do was close my eyes. I like, and he just stopped and he thought I was mad. I wasn't mad. I just couldn't take in 
any more information, and the only way I could take in more information was just to close my eyes and concentrate on what he was saying. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I said, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm full, <laughs> and I'm trying to make more room. And if it wouldn't be for my machines with Evernote and Workflowy, I don't know how I would keep track of this. It's just been, it's been so, it's just been like, I've got to be that fast to keep up with everything that is going on right now. It is just insane. So Angela, I will be praying for you um, on that in that regard. Um, and it is, it is a good feeling and a nice feeling when you can get peace because you, you feel feel like you have control but also pray about it ask God to give you the superpowers you need in your family because if there isn't somebody that's good at managing or um, organizing um, you know he can certainly bless you with those abilities so Tammy <laughs> says I am so proud of you he will you will do great Oh, Angela says the adult daughter that moved out has the superpowers, right? Of course. Of course. Well, maybe she can give you a lesson. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, we all are blessed with different abilities. But don't ever, don't ever doubt that God can't give you those powers and that he can't give you those abilities. You know, I used before a reference that my girlfriend had such a hard time getting up in the morning and having enough time to do devotions and you know she wanted to do morning devotions because she felt it really helped her throughout her day but she just struggled well God started just setting an internal alarm clock and she started waking up at 6 30 every day and it was you know so God God answers prayers even the most minute I wanted to, to see a moose and elk in my yard I've seen the moose I haven't seen the elk yet huh. but God can answer those prayers, and I'll tell you, it is the most amazing feeling when he answers such a trivial prayer like seeing a moose in the yard. That made me cry more than him healing me because it was something so silly to me. Um, and I know that sounds funny, but he listens, he hears, he answers, he responds. Courtney says, congrats, Austin. Thanks. Courtney's from Montana. That You know, that one's over the hill that we were going to go see. Maybe we'll be able to go see them while you're home for... Uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas maybe maybe we found out yesterday that he is able to be home for Thanksgiving we were under the impression he was not able to be um, and what's really cool is regardless if we are here or we go north it's at like a triangle it's a triangular shape and he is five hours away regardless where we are so it's actually works out really well and he'll be home for two weeks for Christmas so maybe we'll get to share um, some of your progress on, on a live video and, and let everybody know how you're doing and what you've been up to. Are you game for that? I guess. You guess? Okay. All right. Do you have anything else you want to share? I know you probably would like to jump off of here. Can't think of anything. Well, for anybody that would be listening through what you've walked through in your life mm -hmm. and now what you're walking into in your life, what is one thing that has been prevalent? You often have said it. I don't know if you'll think of it right now. Mm. Everything is what? Possible. And possible. Yeah. <laughs> You've always said that. With God, everything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put you on the spot. I know. <laughs> I know. But... And, and what would you say to encourage people that have autism or, or disabilities of different types and they might feel discouraged and that they can't accomplish anything in life? What are your thoughts on that? Keep trying. Never give up and look for help if you need it. Exactly. Proud of you, boy. So proud of you. Oh, I'm so <laughs> proud of this kid. I was <laughs> expecting <laughs> You almost knocked yourself out. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Ah, oh, so proud of you. So, if you're going to go and help your dad, why don't you sign off and say your goodbyes to everybody and you can head your direction if you want to. Okay. See ya. <laughs> we'll keep you guys posted when we hear from him and his progress and Austin and I are going to do some videos um, before he leaves. Uh, 
No, we're gonna. Especially the one. Especially the one. Um, Austin loves to sing. And one of the cool things is at where he's going, there's supposed to be a recording studio. So we shall see about that. But um, I want to get, uh, I want to record him sitting on a stump singing in the woods. I, he just has such an awesome voice. And I want to do that for my own personal reference so I have it to watch, but also to share. Because what's funny is with the autism, one of the things that Austin struggled greatly with was being in crowds and being in front of people. And one of the things that shined for him when he was pretty young already, I think it was nine, he was nine, um, he joined the chorus at school and he stood up in front of you know the whole school and the parents in the auditorium and uh, he sang his heart out and that was one of his like superpowers to be able to overcome you know fear of being in front of people and um, we're gonna definitely do a video of him singing and um, we'll probably do a video on his Bigger Than Autism to announce his great news uh, so that he can also uh, keep up there and, and show people. <laughs> I just saw Diana's thing, the singing diesel mechanic. Oh, trust me, he will be too. It's so funny. He sings all the time. <laughs> Have you guys looked up a good solid church for him while he is there? Yes. And we are actually going to go visit it on Tuesday uh, before we go to the, um, to the site. So yes, absolutely. That was one of our first questions is, is, he, is there church there? Is he able to leave the facility for church? And they do have a church run on Sundays. So I am extremely excited about that. Good afternoon, Charles. So um, yes. For sure, that was one of our top priorities, uh, was making sure that he stayed grounded and also found, um, you know, other people and maybe another avenue uh, for him to uh, be able to sing. And uh, one of the cool things is Mountain Ben is about two hours, less than two hours from him. And so are our friends George and Gudrun and Pat. So, um, there are people closer by than we are. We're about five hours from him. But yeah, I'm actually, uh, Chad, even thinking about contacting the church to see if we could meet the pastor. Because uh, I don't know if he's in the offices on Tuesdays or not, but I'd like to find out. So, um, so yeah, we've definitely checked in on that. We also found some good hiking uh, trails to hit um, while we go out there. Um, he's in, he is actually on an Indian reservation out there and is surrounded by the Cascades and we will have a beautiful drive out, um, Mount Rainier and, uh, a lot of different scenery there. So it's supposed to be kind of rainy, so we're going to keep praying for sunshine, but we've got rain gear. So I'm just excited for the day, uh, to be able to spend the day with him. The concern was that I wouldn't have money for fuel to drive out there and with everything that's been selling um, I'm, I'm able to do that uh, that is definitely um, something I wanted to do and uh, I'm very grateful and he wanted me to do that too so very thankful for that um, Shelly says my dentist hums while she works a good indicator that she loves what she does absolutely absolutely 100% do it. Get him plugged in. Yeah, absolutely. That is a concern. And the other nice thing, um, he just got himself um, an iPhone so that he can communicate well with us and keep in touch and have a piece of equipment to do um, searches and different things online and keep a schedule and everything else. There's lots of great tools, especially apps for um, autism to help him stay <clears throat> on top of his requirements there and things. But one of the things that is a highlight there is Bible.com has an app and you can do devotionals together. Um, Kelly and I have done some together and I've done some with uh, a couple of my other friends and it's a really awesome way to uh, do different types of Bible studies, stay connected. And um, there's also a couple um, men's Bible studies, so he can do that with the mountain man as well. Good morning, Stephanie. Glad you're watching. Um, so 
that is another avenue to keep him connected. Um, we are hopeful that uh, there'll be other uh, like-minded and Christian uh, kids there. Um, there are like 100, 172, I think it is, this total number of people that are um, going to this facility. So we will see what happens, but there's a lot of really awesome opportunities there for him. He loves to read. Uh, he loves the things he loves to do there is access to so it's pretty awesome and I know God is opening doors we have prayed you know um, we've put fleeces out for quite a few things and when I say by putting a fleece out we we ask God for example um, when we got an offer on the house, uh, we have different options. We can build, start building here. Um, it would be very, um, it would really be the wrong time of year to be trying to build something. We would be under a great deal of pressure to try to build if this sells right now. Um, but we also have the offer from Elizabeth up north. And we've stayed in communication with Elizabeth. Uh, she had messaged me about two weeks ago. But um, the enemy was trying to seep in there and uh, make us question whether that was still an option. So um, I had messaged her, and I hadn't heard back from her, so we decided to use that as a fleece and um, ask God for very, very clear direction right now that if this does sell, um, if we were supposed to go north to have her respond to my message, otherwise just leave all communications to just die. And we woke up to her message in the morning. So that was one of them. The other one was with Job Corps. If it was, um, Austin was also studying to be a scaler for the um, state of Idaho. And uh, th the testing would have been October 1st. Uh, and then this opportunity came with Job Corps. And we entered Austin in for Job Corps. And we asked God to make it very clear that we were... Um, going to uh, choose the the correct one. And last week when we were out, Austin and I ran out on Thursday and did errands to get the things he needed for Job Corps. And while we were out, the fellow that was training him with the scaling position said, uh, called me and, and told me that the state had canned the test that they removed it because they didn't feel they had enough interest in it and the next test would be in spring. So he would have had to wait till spring and wouldn't have been able to get hired till he had passed this test. So God definitely is making things crystal clear. And that is part of our faithfulness, I believe. There's different stages and parts of faithfulness. Faithfulness is a feeling deep inside and the ability to trust what we can't see, to trust wholeheartedly that God is in control and that he has our best interests in mind, and not trying to interfere with that. The other aspect of faithfulness is um, being in his word daily and, and hearing him communicating with us, whether that is that still small voice that voice in our head, that voice in our heart, that nudge that we're feeling, that person presenting something to us, you know. There's so many ways that God communicates with us, but being very, very in tune and open to hear that. The other thing is discerning the enemy sitting on your shoulder. Anything negative that is brought to your attention is the enemy trying to intercede in God's works and God's plan. He cannot dethrone God but he can remove God from our hearts. So we need to be in complete, um, we need to be in tune. We need to be in tune with everything that's happening in our lives that's going on around us and seeing both God's hands and the enemy's hand because the enemy is going to work extremely hard when you are devoted to Christ. You've seen that. You've seen how the enemy works hard and has been trying to derail and 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 um you know pull us away from our path but we are we are we are steadfast we are firm we are firmly planted 
we do weaken. We are human. We are of flesh. Um, and that's the benefit of having good prayer warriors, having each other to lift each other up. And, and his word, again, his word is so powerful. His word is the food for our soul. And the other thing that I feel is a real big piece to this puzzle, good afternoon, Terry, um, is tithing. And I know that some people don't always agree with this, but I will tell you firsthand when we shifted our mindset to tithing all the time, even when that means giving up our last $5, and it's been to that, God is faithful in that way. We are called to do that. And you know, I know that many people, because I was there, before we started tithing on a consistently regular basis, if I was in a position where I had a bill due and that's all the money I had, or I had to tithe, I kept the money for the bill because I thought God wanted me to be um, responsible. And to me, in my mind, being responsible was not giving up that money I needed to pay that bill and giving it to God. It, it, I was supposed to take care of my responsibilities. However, God comes first, and I know that that is a hard process and a hard thing to wrap your head around, and I know many people don't always agree, but I will tell you firsthand, when I learned, and this was during my sickness, when we had nothing, the Holy Spirit was nudging me to give, and we were down to $100, and I had a bill due, and I had the opportunity to go to church, I gave that and I had a hundred dollar bill. I gave it. I put it in the offering plate. And would you know, that bill was due two days later. I got a hundred dollars to pay that bill. We have to remove our flesh and ourselves from our worldly thoughts and truly follow what is written in the Bible. We are told to give our 10% off the top. And if that means that all I have is $5, I need to give my 10% off the top of that. But we even push that a step further in that if all I had left was $5, I gave it. And you know, God has provided every penny we have needed when we needed it. And he has never kept, had us cold. He has never had us wet. He has never had us unfed. And guys, we have been down that there was, I have three businesses and a personal account. And it was like 23 cents, 53 cents, 13 cents, and three cents. And it was like that for a long time. When you get to a place of extreme faithfulness and you are willing to trust him with every aspect of your life, those numbers don't matter. Those numbers don't put fear and worry in you. When there's things that you can't control, why waste an ounce of your thought process on them? I could not control them. There was nothing more I could physically do to change anything. All I could do was pray and trust that God would provide. And we've done that for the last three years in that regard. And God is faithful. When we do what we are called to do, and we, and, and yes, we're going to stray. And yes, we're going to sin. None of us are perfect. That includes us. But when we find ourselves pulling away or separating ourselves, maybe we're not reading the word. Maybe we're not loving up on people the way we should. Maybe we're not tithing the way we should. We catch ourselves and we pull back in. It's, it's just a process, guys. And the more you keep doing that, the less you're going to have to pull yourself back in. The more it's going to become a habit, the more you're going to feel it here, that it is something that you can rely on. And the more we separate ourselves from worldly thoughts and worldly things and the world, I mean, that is our saving grace. That is our blessing out here where we are because we don't have to fight near as hard as you guys do. You guys live in it. We don't. By choice. We live here. We go out when we need to. When we go out, 
it's just like it, it just makes us shake our head I feel for all of you because when you are living in that in the world there's so much pulling at us and and there's so much tearing at us and that is one of our prayers for Austin and I would love for you guys to help pray for him in that regard that he stays whole that he stays untouched that he stays with what he's been taught which I don't that I don't question but um, we are we are praying a very strong hedge over him while he's in school for that reason because he's going to be in the world and and the world pulls and and we have to fight every day we have to be strong we have to be strong in our skin in our person we have to be strong in who we are and it is not an easy task it's not an easy task being out here so I know what it's like for you guys being in the world and working in the world but the thing is we need to also look at our lives as opportunities the more we spend our days loving up on other people and living out God's Word in the world the more whole we will be while in the world if that makes any sense there's been a bunch of messages here I'm gonna jump back here uh, let's see here Angela says had to leave for a second and can't hear anything ooh are you guys able to ah, I hope you guys are able to hear um, good morning my dear friend Terry says I just noticed you were on the weather looks beautiful it is it is perfect it's a little warm right now but this morning was perfect hunting weather we uh, Austin leaves Tuesday and let's see that's uh, Thursday Thursday is opening day so we are hoping to fill our freezer with elk and deer Kelly says amen faith is an encompass is all-encompassing when your mindset is that everything is God's your actions and mindset change yeah you know moving forward in everything you know this is God's house this is God's land I am God's child you know everything that I own is God's I am a steward of his things that's why I was twisted in my thoughts ha, there's a heart in the clouds <laughs> oh, God is so good okay um that's why I was twisted in my thinking that I needed to be responsible for that bill but there's there's a deeper level to that and that is being that faithful that you trust that in doing what you are called to do you will be able to do what you need to do and the more we walk that out the more true and visible that is so I want to encourage you guys to realize that this all goes together and it's all a matter of trusting absolute faith and trust now you guys have seen us walking this out you've seen me have bad days I'm very honest I share those bad days and and I share what causes them and I share where how I regroup from them so that I pray that through my walk I'm helping you to do the same and and being able to be faithful when it's hard and and being able to trust when it's hard enables you to trust and be faithful when it's good Diana says amen is right it comes down to obedience we will trust him to be faithful Will we trust him to be faithful? I know it's hard. We are in the hard place right now. I know you are, sister. And you know what? Just keep being faithful and keep trusting and keep tithing and, and keep knowing that his your time is coming. His timing is best. You know, I've never, I've never doubted his timing. What was really, I'll, I'll tell you something. This is something that's really awesome. I am I am much easier to melt into our situations and adjust to our situations and accept our situations I was willing to accept that if God wanted us here God wants us here for a reason the mountain man however um, has just grown to had grown to a very worn worn place he's the one that's doing all the physical labor granted we do too but the majority of that is on him we're just as grunts and when things break they've broken for him yes they've broken for us all but in his mind this has just been a battlefield of struggle and he didn't want to be here 
But what was the most amazing thing I've ever seen is when he came to me and told me that God told him to wait and that we would be here for winter, the last place on this earth that this man wanted to be. He was at peace with it. And that made my heart sing because for the last nine years, he has not been in peace here because of the struggles and my sickness. And like I said, I, I had life-saving surgery three years ago, but I, for six years prior, my health was declining and we didn't know why. So when you start to grow in your faith and God starts building your faith muscles and you start really seeking Him and pulling into Him and desiring Him, He does fill you with the peace and the joy and the happiness that He promises. It's all a process. It's a growth process. It's no different than, than learning how to walk. When we learned how to walk, we didn't have any fear. And we didn't stop. When you start to walk, you, you get, you, as, a, as an infant, that desire to walk is so strong, you don't care if you're going to fall. You fall 20 million times, but you still keep getting up and keep trying because you realize the ability of mobility. <laughs> But as we grow and age, fear and worry sets in. If we had the strength and abilities as we did when we were learning to walk, this part of our journey would be so much easier. I'm there. I am not afraid and I am not worried about anything because I know he will take care of us. Even if we ended up homeless, he would have provided a shoebox for shelter. I, I am not worried. Um, and I, I pray and wish that for you guys because man, when you can step over the fear and worry and leave it behind, wow, wow, it is just, it is just life changing. And I told you guys this before, when that happened to me, I was really struggling because I thought there was something wrong with me. I felt so numb inside. I thought that I just lost all emotion and it wasn't that I lost all emotion. I still was happy. I still was joyful. I still was excited. I just didn't any longer have fear and worry. But that numbness really concerned me until I realized what had happened. And it is an amazing feeling. And to walk through this with no fear and no worry and that numbness, this is a really poor analogy. But it's like a drug addict seeking that next high because it makes them numb. I seek God and that numbness that I have is protecting me in such great ways. I don't have the stress and the anxiety that is taking away from my health. And like I said, I know that is a poor analogy, but you get the point. I am seeking God and through seeking God, I am gaining so, so much, and I can't keep that light hidden, and that's why we do this every week, and that is why they keep getting longer and longer. It's crazy. I have people say, I would love to watch, but you get so long, and I'd love to keep it short, but it's really hard to keep it short. We've had such amazing conversations, and what really makes me laugh is two weeks ago when I didn't, I didn't even want to be alive and God pushed me to be live. We were on for two hours talking, all of us. That was crazy. That was the longest one ever, and that was the day I felt the worst. <laughs> but anyway, I know there's a couple more comments here. Shelly says, I had a few things happen yesterday that, day that I was able to realize that were evil trying to get into my day. The first I realized right away, but the second took me a little longer to realize what was going on, but I did realize. And did you cheer? Is that not like a cool feeling when you realize that? I've gotten to the point now where I actually find such humor in that. It makes me just laugh. And and I do I do get giddy and cheer because when you learn how he is trying to manipulate and how he is trying to take away your joy, your happiness, and your goodness, and you stop him in his tracks, there's nothing he can do. We don't even tell him to, we don't even have to tell him to get behind us because that's where he's at. He's behind us. He's behind us whispering in our ears. And you know what? When you can learn to twist those words into a, a mist that just totally disappears and you don't hear it anymore, it is so, so awesome. But again, 
It is a process. And, and that book, This Present Darkness, will give you a really, really eye-opening visit to how the enemy works. And it will um, really also give you the tools you need to bind and remove evil from your life. And I'll tell you what, thank you, Diana, for sharing that book. Do you see how that one share enabled lots of people to grow? It's just so awesome. So, so awesome. And I've had people that have read that book and said it was just too evil. But I hope that through reading it, they gained from it because that's what we're walking out in this life. That's what we're walking out in our day to day. He is on this earth and he is trying his darndest to make us trip up and to pull us from God. Like I said, he can't dethrone God, but he can dethrone our hearts. And that's what we've got to guard. We've got to guard ourselves, our families, our lives, and just build our trust and our faithfulness in him. He will provide. And right now, our house may sell, it may not. We are trusting him for his choice for our lives. And, um, you know, we, we've been told that we are going to receive a written offer uh, probably after Friday. So that is a huge, huge blessing. And we are just trusting God. We are trusting God. Now, let me see here. Tammy, Tammy says, I can hear you. Okay. Terry can hear me. Hearing you fine. Okay. Everybody's hearing me. Good, good, good. All right. Charles says, God's peace be with you and your family. Thank you. Oh, Angela's app locked up. The best thing I can tell you is if that happens, just go out and go back in. Um, sometimes our phones get clogged. Um, our computers get hung up. So um, just go in and out and come back in. Um, I am going to read some things to you this morning that I felt were kind of, uh, that pertain to this situation. And then I will let you guys get back to your days. Um, I need to get moving too because I've got a very long family to-do list here. We've got things to sell and things to pack and all kinds of stuff to do. Okay, now you guys have heard me talk about this. This is called Find Joy in Your Journey. It is a necessary part of the process. Psalms 32.8, I will instruct you. Why are you still here? When Jesus saved you, why didn't he simply take you to heaven to be with him? Because he's not only interested in your final destination, he wants to do a work in you and through you on the way to it. We get impatient when it comes to God's will for our lives. We just want to get there. But a great deal of the time usually elapses between when God calls us and when we've fulfilled his will of our lives. And until we accept that, we're not ready to go anywhere. We need to understand that the journey is an important process. It matters to God what you become on the way to where you're going. And following him in obedience through many unknowns, trials, and difficulties is an integral and indispensable part of your preparation. God uses the journey to teach you faith, refine your character, and equip you for the greater challenges that lie ahead. In fact, if you're in the process of seeking God's will right now, you're already fulfilling part of it in your life. God said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Don't make the mistake of thinking that because you don't know all you'd like to, you're not making progress. Something, in, something is happening right now. Your faith is being stretched. Your patience is being developed. Your doubts are being confronted and conquered, and your relationship with God is growing deeper. He always prepare, prepares us in advance for what he has planned ahead for us. Yes, the struggle is uncomfortable but it is a necessary part of the process. Enjoy your journey. And the only way you're going to enjoy your journey is if you learn to discern the enemy stepping in and you wholeheartedly are trusting God's outcome. And I know for fact, because I've grown to this place, that my previous self didn't always trust the outcome and tried to intervene. When you catch yourself doing that, that's human nature. You're going to do it. The more you realize you're doing it, and the, like I said, the more you realize you're doing it, and the more you keep learning to trust, the more that will become a habit, and that will just be your natural way of thinking and reacting to situations. So you need to form those and stretch those muscles 
and be willing to grow in him and trust in him and and make those those things habits let me see when you talked about getting knocked down and getting back up no wait it's not all coming there we go when you talked about getting knocked down and getting back up is what I do all the time. I'm not giving up on God as my prayers and my prayers for my marriage. God bless you, my dear friend. And that's just it. It is hard. It is, it is a hard place to be. But God is definitely working always, always, always in the background. He is prompting us to seek him to help us through these hard spots. He is not only building us, Terry, but sometimes our journeys, I mentioned this the other week, sometimes the walks we have to walk out are not our walks. Sometimes those walks that we are forced to walk out because of a spouse or a child or a parent, whatever it may be, Sometimes, because of our relationships, we are forced to walk out situations as a result of, our, of others' learning process. So, and, and sometimes, you know, those are situations we will never know. You know, we question, are we doing something wrong? What can I do different? You know, the thing we need to do is just keep seeking Him and asking Him for wisdom and knowledge and strength. And, and trusting him trusting that when we don't feel him when we don't hear him when we don't see movement that he's still working he's there he's doing a million things in the background and and he's lining things up he will never ever do anything that is negative for us ever 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 and and that's all we can do we need to verbally put on our armor every day Ephesians 6 and put our armor on and prepare ourselves. And like I said, you know, you guys that are out in the world every day, I pray for you. I pray for you every day because it is a hard place to be. But like I said, in putting on our armor and being out in the world and going through these tough times, if we are able to show love to others while we are hurting, if we are able to minister to others and help others and love others and, and speak the gospel while we are hurting and suffering and going through this, it will help us handle the world. It will fill us. It will keep us full. If we empty ourselves and are hurting, if we aren't filling that place with God, what's going to fill it? I can guarantee you he won't hesitate and he won't take long. The enemy will try to get in there. And that's where we sit in corners rocking because he's filling our heads with negative stuff and making us question our abilities and like uh, Angela said, and causing us to feel, blame ourselves and question ourselves and question, question situations. It's all the enemy. When you start questioning anything, walk away from it. It's, it's, anytime you have doubt, anytime you have fear, anytime you worry, it's not God. It's not God at all. Kelly says, praying for you daily, Terry. God is good and walking with you moment by moment. Amen. Amen. And that is what the beauty is of this community. This community is steadfast. It is strong and it is lifting each other. And I am seeing God's work every day in our community. It is absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And right there, this may be... Be one of the only places you have in your world to come and love up on other people. Let it fill you. Let it fill you. Let it you my prayer is that you walk away whole. There is another heart in the clouds. Oh, gosh. I am seeing hearts everywhere. I am being filled. I am being lifted. I am being nurtured. It is just an amazing feeling, you know? Ah, oh, gosh, God is so good. Okay. Kelly. Oh, Terry says to Kelly, thank you so much for your prayers and encouragement. I pray God will continue to bless you and your family each moment of your life. Any news, Kelly and Courtney, on your results? Um, Courtney had an MRI last week, and uh, we are praying for that. So keep lifting Courtney in your prayers for complete and total healing. And... Um, 
And really guys, praying for each other is such a huge and powerful thing. Every night and every morning, and we, we pray as a family for everybody. During the day, I love how the Holy Spirit nudges us to think of others. You know, when people come to mind, okay, Courtney says not yet. All right, well, keep us posted. We are all praying. Um, as pe The Holy Spirit prompts me to think of people. And when I think of people, if I'm heavily, heavily, heavily prompted, I will reach out to them. If they come to mind, I, I pray for them. And, and I know that there are certain people going through some very difficult challenges. And when they come to mind, they get lifted in prayer immediately. Um, prayer is a powerful, powerful thing. And we need to remember that. We need to realize that. We need to... Um, that is one of our tools in our toolbox. Prayer, reading the Bible, tithing, being faithful, pulling into God, trusting. All of these things are things that we need to recognize as our powers. These are the things that give us our superpowers, that give us our joy and enable us to enjoy the journey. Let me see here. Uh, Kelly says, still waiting. Long story, but possibly Friday. The enemy is working hard. Well, we will all combat him. We are going to join forces and continue to uh, lift you guys in prayer. And of course he's going to. He wants you to question and fear and worry. Don't do any of it. He's, don't buy into it. Uh, Kelly says, I do the same. God whispers and, and nudges us every day to love others. He does. And you know, I am reading a book that I will be sharing soon. This book is just blowing me away. And I'm not even going to share a title or anything yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a whole thing on it. But uh, it is just amazing. It is absolutely amazing um, what it is pointing out and what we are really called to do and how we are called to love and how we can do it. And... It also is blowing me away and opening my mind and making me wonder greatly what God has in store for the mountain man and I. And um, I believe that he is going to be taking us heavily out of our comfort zone, which is hard to imagine because we are pretty bold um, people as far as stepping out of our comfort zone. But this book and what it is, what I, I, I was led to this book, so I believe that this is a tool God is using to teach. And if that is the case, boy, will we, especially the mountain man, we will be stepping out of our comfort zone moving forward here. And I don't know how he's going to use us or how, what it's going to look like, but oh, it's, it's going to be amazing. It is, it's always going to be amazing. Um, good deal. Kelly says, no worries, very calm. Good, I'm glad that you are being gifted with that calm. Um, that's important through, through walks like that and through things like, th like that, to have the calm and the peace and the reassurance. And, just that, and that's part of the trust. That's part of the trusting. So, awesome. Now, um, here's another one. Conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The story is told of a man who lived on a beautiful farm. When he died, the property, which had been in the family for over 200 years, was sold to one of the neighbors. One day, the new neighbor was walking in a field when he noticed an odd-looking rock sticking out of the dirt. He took it home, washed it, and took it to a, jewel a jewelry store. The jeweler confirmed what the owner already suspected. The old stone, which had been in the field for thousands of years, was a large, uncut emerald and proved to be worth several million dollars. This gemstone had been in the field all along, waiting for someone to come along and discover it. Over the years, people had walked past it thousands of times and overlooked it because it looked like nothing more than a common old garden rock. When we discover something, in actuality, we are finding something that already exists, even though we were unaware of it. Here's the point. While many of us are seeking God's will for our lives, often what we're looking for is right under our nose. But we keep searching because we don't recognize it. To recognize a precious stone, you need to be familiar with its characteristics and know what to look for. Likewise, to recognize God's will, you must live by his scripture. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove 
that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That calls for quality time reading your Bible and talking with and listening to the author. I can't say that enough, guys. You know, that is the key. That is the key to the doorway and the door to goodness in your life and to being able to feel and hear and see his direction. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? And it's, it's so true. You know, when I was on the farm, I wanted more than anything to have God talk to me. I, I told my landlord that all the time. I want that closeness with God. I want what people say they have, that they talk to him and that they can hear him and they can feel him. I'm like, I don't have any direction. I don't know his will for my life. I don't know my purpose. Here I am, 10 years later, matured more, nurtured more, seeking him more, and I am in that place that I craved. It is through our works that we get to these places. And had I known then what I know now, I may not have taken 10 years to get to this place or um, seven, because I found I was there when I had my surgery. But the more we seek him, and my goal here is to help those that are younger than I to get to this place sooner than I did, because there is bounty and beauty and miracles and amazingness and awesomeness and joy, happiness. I could go on. This place is a wholesome place to be and I am there and now I can only imagine what that means as to where I'm headed. Seeking him is the key and we all have that key, but we have to have that will and desire. And also the lack of fear, because many of us, because we live in the world, are afraid what people are going to think. Who gives a crap? Excuse me, but who gives a crap? Who cares? Who cares? We've learned firsthand that the people we thought were closest to us didn't really care that much about us anyway. So we cared about that. We should be caring about God more. God, God is the answer to all. And when we realize that and we really delve into that, this is where we end up. And it's awesome. You guys got to get here. All right. So let me see here. We've got, wait, it's not moving. Okay. Maybe that's not, there we go. Let me see. Okay. Terry says, one last thing. No, my friend, you share as much as you want. Someone questioned me last week and was afraid that they had talked too much during my live. Do not ever feel like you are talking too much or taking over. If you are being led to ask questions, to speak, to share, you share. I don't care if you end up taking over the whole thing. God may be leading you to teach us. So don't ever feel like you shouldn't be asking questions or commenting, okay? If you're out there watching, if you're watching the replay, please don't ever feel that way. We love, this interaction is what makes this whole. This is a community. This isn't me. And this isn't me. This is God. <laughs> All right. Terry says, one last thing. I want to thank you for this podcast. It gives me an awesome place to come and to be lifted up and have so much love given me and my wife and also so much encouragement and support. God, God bless you all. Right back to you, Terry. Um, I'm thankful that you guys take the time to join me. I know that this is a large commitment of your time every week, and I'm really grateful that you guys feel the renewal that I feel I get off of here. Two weeks ago when I felt that lousy, I got off and I was so whole. I felt so good. And I really, really was not feeling well. By the way, I went for a treatment yesterday and although my entire body hurts from toe to head and head to toe, I feel so good. I feel so, so good. And I am back on track. I got my saliva and hair analysis results. I was able to afford my supplements. I purchased them yesterday because we sold something. Remember I told you I didn't have money to purchase them? Okay, so my supplements are on the way. So God is healing me. God is delivering us. God is blessing us, and he's going to do the same for you guys. And Terry, I'm so, so grateful, and thank you for sharing that. It warms my heart to know that 
God is using me for a vessel to be able to truly, truly help people and that I'm not the only one gaining from this. So awesome. Um, Kelly says you're ahead of it because you are open to God's will for you and the mountain man. Yeah, you know, and that that's a really good point is to be open to it. You know, so many people question God and what he's about and what he's capable of and is he real and you know all that questioning keeps us from having that openness and that open heart and that willingness to delve in and I, I hope and pray that I can can reach people and help people open up to those those feelings and, and that openness and and everything oh this is just it's such an amazing amazing place to be <laughs> oh I can't say it enough um, Kelly says, we aren't here to please people or what they think, but rather care what God thinks. Amen. And you know what? This book that I'm reading is really calling us to, to really love and not just love um, the whole, but to love the broken. It points out that Jesus came to this earth and he didn't spend his time with the godly people and and those that um were saved he spent his time with the sinners and was condemned for it but by spending his time and loving up on those that needed it he saved many lives and he left this earth leaving us with that responsibility but how many of us are willing to love the world's heavily lost some of those heavily lost people are scary in our eyes and are a threat in our eyes and he, that's what I'm saying he's calling us to step out and out of our comfort zones and uh, all of us but we'll talk more on that I want to save that for a whole other topic um, let me see here um, Charles says seek first the kingdom of God amen Angela says can't hear so I apologize if this interrupts the flow, but I have a praise report. I asked for prayer for my neighbors. The Lord gave me the courage to share his love with them on Saturday, and it really melted the resistance. I've been praying every day for them since. Oh, gosh, no. I don't care if that breaks the flow or not. It didn't. It fit right in. But if it had, I don't care. That's an awesome praise report. And share those praises, whether they're in your life directly or in somebody you're in contact with. You know, these are the kind of stories and testimonies we need to hear to encourage maybe others to step out and to have the faith to step out. And, and you know, sometimes those people that we can't, can't's not the right word, that we choose not to love up on up close and personal out of fear, out of um, whatever, because some, sometimes, I, we talked about this the other week, there are situations we do need to protect ourselves and our families, but that does not mean we can't pray. It does not mean we can't lift these people so heavily in prayer that there's nothing that they can do to stop the powerful beauties that God's going to put on them. You know, and we, we have such abilities through prayer, so don't, don't miss that opportunity prayer is an easy task and and Angela that is fantastic you had shared some of that with me so I am praising God with you that is awesome awesome stuff and and keep doing it and the thing there too Angela is through your works you will encourage even more seeing the power and the abilities and your fearlessness and how you wear God in your actions will also continue to break those walls. So when I do um, share this book, it will it will benefit you as well, and it will definitely scream to you as like it is me. Um, oh, I just got rid of the comments. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, Cynthia. Hope you're doing well today. So I have one more to read, and this goes with the third thing that I was talking about today. The privilege of giving. When the offering plate is passed, do you enthusiastically support God's work or are you a reluctant giver? Just as our Heavenly Father wants us to be faith, full of faith, wisdom, and love, He also desires that we abound in gracious, cheerful generosity. 
We could all learn from the Macedonian Christians of Paul's day. Despite their own poverty, these believers begged for the privilege of giving to the needs of the Jerusalem church. They apparently saw the weekly offering the way God does, not as a separate event from the worship service, but as an essential part of following Jesus. For many believers, the tithe has been seen as the standard for giving. This concept originated in the Old Testament when Abraham gave um, Melchizedek a tenth of the spoils from the battle. Tithing, which was God's requirement for the Israelites, was like a national tax. In fact, the nation had three tithes, one for support of the priests and Levites, one for the temple and the feasts, and one given every three years to benefit the poor. Today, this would be equivalent to our offerings that pay the pastors and the staff, provide for the ministry and maintenance of the church, and help those in financial need. Abounding in generosity looks different for each person. What's important is that giving is voluntary, M voluntarily now wait, this isn't written right. What's important is that giving is voluntary, modeled after Christ's example, motivated by a desire to give, and based on what one has. As you give true yourself fully to the Lord, generosity will overflow. I cannot mention that enough. And I know many of you don't belong to a church. Many Christians have been really hurt by the church. Um, we have been in a position where we have not been able to afford to go to church. So we do our own church at home. We listen to Todd from SSL Family Dad on YouTube, which I will be sharing um, some with you later today. And we listen to our pastor um, on, on his podcast as well. And uh, we listen to Phil Robertson. There's a lot of different ones we listen to. We break it up and, and switch it up. Um, Bobby, uh, this went blank. The Hour of Power. Um, so there's lots of good things online that we can listen to. Something else that we need to remember is that tithing is not only in an offering plate. If you don't belong to a church, but you choose to tithe, you can tithe to those that you know are in need. You know, um, I'll have to share with you later. I'm going to talk to the mountain man. Maybe we'll do a video on what we've decided to do once we sell the house. Um, but there are several people that I am friends with and that we are aware of that are in great need. And rather than tithing the church that we belong to, we are ch choosing to tithe them. So it doesn't matter where specifically you are tithing. If you are giving to God's community and you are giving your funds to benefit the kingdom and the church, you are tithing. And I think it is important that we remember the importance of that because it is something that we are very strongly called to do and we are very strongly called to love and give of ourselves and to give freely knowing that when we give, even if it's the last of what we have, that God will take care of us. It is written over and over again and we need to pay attention to what we are called to do. So... I'm just sharing with you what we have found and what has been really called to our attention in our family and how we have grown in it, how it has uh, miraculously uh, been revealed to us and also how you guys have seen how we have been cared for. God is always there and he is always caring for us. So. Please, please remember that in, in your faithfulness that, you know, when we feel weak and we are in a distraught place, the reason we are there is because we are not being faithful in one way or another. We are not reading the Bible. We are not pulling into him. We are not trusting him. And the wholeness of it all is when we tithe, 
you know that's just makes the whole process complete in my opinion um, and that's so funny my thumb doesn't work but my finger does go figure um, Angela says to clarify I shared the gospel message that's awesome and I am very grateful that you were called and answered that call because sometimes we are called but fear sets in and it keeps us from producing and and um, sharing and loving and it's important that we learn to do that and that we learn to do that like I said last week there is one time that I was called that I didn't answer that call and it haunts me to this day so when we are called and we are called to do things we need we need to act on those callings even if that is opening a door for somebody or smiling at somebody that needs a smile or saying a prayer when you walk past somebody that you could tell is hurting or stopping and praying for somebody you know there's so many different things we can do to help others and it doesn't have to be people in our circle it can be people outside of our circle it can it can be people that we pass in in our day to day so don't don't hesitate those and miss out on those options especially when you know you're being nudged because um, I don't want you to regret that was one regret I have in my life um, Diana says many years ago we attended a church that had a Macedonia Sunday on that Sunday we gave 90% and kept 10% no one who participated ever went without it was a day of rejoicing Wow that is fantastic and absolutely awesome and that is an act of great trust and faith and I have to imagine that while you were there, you felt extremely pushed and, and driven to do that. And it, it is such an awesome, awesome feeling when you act on that and walk away from that with no fears because you felt so led to participate in such a thing and to do such a thing. Knowing, and when you're in that position and when you continue to learn to trust God and you walk away from something like that, and you don't even think twice it's because you know you know he's gonna take care of you that is just such a wholesome and complete feeling you know when I learned how to manifest joy in my life through God that was one thing but to manifest this peace in trusting his goodness it is it is just such an awesome awesome place to be so I just I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to share these things with you guys today that I was able to share the mountain boy with you today you know we are so excited for him and we certainly um, ask for your prayers um, it means a lot to us that you keep him in your ongoing prayers because um, a lot of times the kids that end up in this program are children that have nothing or that come from brokenness or that um, this is their last chance for anything wholesome other than maybe stepping into a gang environment or drugs and alcohol and and that's not the only kids that go to these programs um, but by the sounds of things, it's a good majority. So our prayer is that, you know, that he thrives and through his walking out what we've taught, that he has the ability to reach others. So I'm um, just so thoroughly excited for him. And I know that this will probably hit me harder next week than it is now because there's just so much right now. Um, I and you know I'm a mom I'm human um, he's been such a integral part of my, my life and such a solid part of um, who I am he was dependent on me you know so there'll be a lot of newness coming from this for me um, but to see him thrive will be such a reward such a reward and I am I'm gonna miss him but um, I'm just so excited for what is going to happen for him and, and what this is going to do for him, the doors that will open and, 
and so forth. Terry says, I will be keeping him in my prayers along with all of the prayer warriors. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And guys, you know, I truly love you all. This is just such an awesome community. We have created such a wholesome place here. And if you folks have prayers and you need prayers, please don't hesitate to ask. If you don't want to leave them in the comments below, you are welcome to private message me or you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. Um, if, if you need prayers and you don't want to share the details, just say, I need prayers. God knows what you need. We don't need to know. You know, um, if, if you want to share celebrations, you can email me at the same email. You know, it is, that has been one of the most amazing parts of this whole journey is seeing other people's miracles manifested through this community and through our prayers for each other. And... I just, I am just so grateful for what we have here. It is just an amazing thing. And, and like I said, this isn't me. This is God using me as a vessel and, and giving me the materials and the abilities to share what I share with you. And God is very present. We are all very prayerful. We are all very trusting. We are all growing in him through this. And it is just amazing. So please don't hesitate to, uh, share your prayer requests. I want to encourage you guys to keep Chad in your prayers. I want to encourage you to keep Tammy and her family. There's lots of transitions there as well. So keep uh, she and her family in your prayers. Kelly and uh, Courtney and, and, and Mike, they need prayer too with uh, Courtney's situation and um, just all they have going as well. Terry and his wife June need prayers and uh, Diana and Craig need prayers and uh, we just ask that you keep each other lift each other Angela we're gonna pray for you um, and and hopefully God will bless you with some uh, peace and comfort in your managing skills and that he helps you to shine in that area and that whatever other superpowers you have they start to uh, kick in and and help you in the managing area as well and And to continue to nurture your neighbor. That's just really awesome um, Can you share his name or their name so that we can also lift them in prayer and so that they're um, We can pray for their openness and what you are sharing with them and thank you for sharing that testimony with us And like I said guys, please 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 don't ever feel like you shouldn't be commenting or that you're commenting too much or you're talking too much. Please don't feel that way because I feel that when we are communicating in that regard and that God spurs thoughts, that's, you know, or when thoughts are spurred, that is God moving in us. So this is a place where, where all of our communications can be a light to others. There's so many people watching these replays and watching these on YouTube, you know, we never know who we're going to reach, so please, please don't hesitate. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot that you guys were listening to this while you were traveling today. Um, we also need to pray for uh, Alexis to um, find an apartment today. That is a very huge prayer. We need to pray that they have open doors and find a place for she and her family. And... Um, that you are able to uh, get your family moved into a new home. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed listening, and I'm going to say a congratulations too, because um, this was really awesome news that uh, Tammy is going to be a grandma again, and Alexis is expecting in January. So congratulations, that is awesome, awesome news, and we are celebrating for you also. So, guys, don't hesitate to share. Don't hesitate to ask for prayers. Don't hesitate to do anything in this environment. Um, what a great place for Austin to minister and be an example. Yeah, when you said earlier about him singing while he's working, he sings all the time. And it would be so cool that just by him simply singing the songs that move him, that they tend to move others. So just be really cool and he's such a happy-go-lucky kid so laid back and just he enjoys making people laugh he enjoys nurturing and making sure people are okay you know one of the biggest things this kid has always done is checked on me to make sure I'm alright you know 
somebody is going to get nurtured there because they're going to have to replace me because it has become such a habit for him. And I, I love those qualities in him. So it'd be neat to see what happens. I'm already anticipating maybe bringing somebody home for Thanksgiving. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. So we will see. But, and also what's going to be really crazy for him is if this is going to move and we do get an offer on this house, we will be out of here by Thanksgiving and in a new place. So it'll be really crazy to pick Austin up and bring him to his new home, you know. And what's really cool there as well at Elizabeth is that there is a guest, a, uh, yeah, a guest house that was deemed his already, that he has a place to stay when he comes to visit and, and stuff. So pretty, really, really awesome. And um, the other nice thing is at Christmas, um, when he comes home, my in-laws should be visiting and will be present there as well. So it'll be a really nice time for him and just a really, really, really good time. I'm just so looking forward to all that fellowship and just God is doing such amazing things. I just feel so tremendously blessed in so many ways and by each of you. It's just amazing. So I'm so glad I could be on here to share that with you today. Um, Yes, you're absolutely welcome, Tammy. And Kelly says, praying for your travels with Austin. Enjoy your day together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we would love prayers for travel mercies. And uh, oh, I'm just so excited. So many doors opening, so many good things happening. And they will happen for you too. You've seen us. We've been faithful. We've trusted. And we've continued to not waver in our trust and our faith. We've wavered in weariness and tiredness, but never in our trust of God. Never. And that has not weakened, it has strengthened, and you've seen the enemy trying to sink his claws in, and you've seen us rebuking him. He has no place here. There is no place for him here. Not in any of us, not on our property, not in our home, none of that. And we all have the same powers. What I am able to do and what I am able to um, create in my life and to experience in my life and my faith walk is all something that is attainable by you as well. Don't feel like I am in a place that you can't be. It's not the case. I don't ever want you to feel that way. I want you to be like enlightened and excited that where I am is somewhere that you can head to. I don't want you to, to, um, ever be intimidated or, or feel like you're lacking. I want you to feel like this is a possibility because it is. Nothing that I'm walking out isn't something that you can't have. And God will be faithful and he will answer your prayers. I know many of you are walking in dif difficult times and struggling with difficult decisions and dealing with the hard. Trust. Just keep trusting. I know that it's hard. I know that you're going to get weary. I know that you are, are, are struggling. Keep walking it out and keep your strength. Amen, Kelly. Amen. All we need is a war room. So true. If you have not watched that movie, go to treyerwilderness.com slash war room. It is the best money you will ever spend on watching a movie. That is a fabulous, fabulous movie. Diana, you never reported back what Overcomer was, how Overcomer was. I want to know. Um, that's another movie by the same producers, the Kendricks Brothers. Um, it looks fabulous. And another movie that we watched uh, was 99 cents on Amazon right now is The Upside. It's based on a true story. I saw it. The previews looked hysterical. And you know what? It was a really, really, really good movie um, in a lot of different aspects. So um, that's another good one to watch if you need encouragement, uplifting, and just something good to watch that gives you humor and inspiration. That's a good one. But guys, I've taken up enough of your time. Oh, cool. I'm glad you loved it. The War Room, I think you're referring to, right, Terry? But um, guys, I love you guys. I am thankful that we have this community right here. This is our War Room. This is our War Room. This is our place, our safe haven to come and minister and worship and fellowship and be together. Um, God's... God is so, so amazing, so, so amazing, and his promises are true, and all you need to do if you are not, um, if you have not accepted Jesus in your heart, it's a simple task of just sitting down and talking to him just like you would talk to me, 
my relationship with God is very open. So open that I just all of a sudden start talking to him throughout my day. Out loud sometimes. Um, and that's the beauty of being able to come to the throne and just being able to go to him and talk to him. It's not something you have to be intimidated about. It's not something that has to be complicated and that you have to say special prayers or be in a special place um, or even be on your knees. Being on your knees is an act of wholehearted faithfulness to God. But you could sit just like I am right here and you could call out to God, call out to Jesus. I talk to him, I call him Papa. And just ask him to forgive all your sins. Ask him to fill your heart and, and to, to come into your life and to help you walk through this journey called life. And just ask him to accept you. And that's all you need to do. God will come into your heart. God will give you the Holy Spirit. And God will be a part of your life. You may not see big fireworks go off. And you may not feel any different. But he is there for you. And he is there for you no matter when you need him. You can call on him at any time, any day, any hour. And, and you, you can continue to talk to him about what's going on in your life. And know, you need to know that he will answer your prayers. He doesn't always answer them when we expect him to. We've been walking this journey out for over three years. His timing is when we will see our prayers answered. And they may not be answered the way we want them to be answered. Because you need to remember that God is going to look out for you the way he sees best suited for you so if you're asking for a million dollars he may not give you a million dollars but he will bless you with abundance and great riches they just may not look the same as what you're expecting but you need to have an openness and a willingness to um, just love him and and know that he is loving you back even though you can't see him or feel him he is there and he will be there. He will stay there. He will carry you through tough times. He will celebrate with you through good times. And it is just that simple. I sit in the floor every night and talk to him. Awesome. I talk out loud more than in a quiet place. I know. Uh, me too. You know, and I, I do both. I seek the quiet time because I feel real wholeness and a real deep connection that way. My morning devotions are spent with him. But I also spend my whole day talking to him. I have best friends, and God is no different than that. God is like my best friend. My husband is my best friend. Many of you uh, are my best friends. And, and I can talk to him no different than I can talk to my best friends. And that is such a wholesome feeling. And, and just to know that we have the ability to talk to him. I share everything with him and and I know that he is listening even though he may not respond even though he may not show me signs that he's present I know he's listening and it's just amazing to have that relationship and you know this is this is a funny analogy but I'm gonna put it out there you know there are people who get all dressed up and they celebrate their their uh, football teams and their baseball teams and they they are willing to celebrate that out loud and look kooky in their painted faces and their uh, garb that they wear to celebrate their favorite team and many of us are afraid to talk out loud and celebrate something that is unseen but that we can see the miracles working and see the miracles and see his presence so many times. So I want to encourage you in your walk to not be afraid to share the gospel, to not be afraid to share your faith. You know, sometimes when we are with new people and we say, you know, God has been so good to us. Oh, the miracles that have been performed. I could just tell you story upon story. And you leave it at that, and you know you plant a seed. 
And you know, sometimes what that will do is give those people that are hiding behind their painted faces the opportunity to feel safe in sharing their faith too. That they do, they are faithful, but they're afraid to speak it because their circle isn't a circle where they feel comfortable sharing. But maybe you've just opened that door because you are now somebody that's safe, that they can be themselves. Because you know, when we are able to share our faith on our sleeve and we are able to share the gospel and to share our miracles and to share our love for God freely and not fear it, um, we are creating and sharing with others that place of wholeness because that's where we are. We are in a, we are, we are in a relationship that we are not afraid to be who we are. We are not afraid anymore of what people think. So many of us, I was, you know, so many of us are always afraid what other people think. Or we alter ourselves in different environments because uh, of the environment. You don't feel that comfort in some environments. But you know what? You hit a place when you hit where I am that you're not afraid to share who you are no matter what circle you're in. And you know what? If they don't appreciate it and they don't like it and they diss you, you've at least planted your seed. But you'll also find in doing this that you find circles that accept you and that love you and that are happy to have you because they feel your comfort and they feel your peace and they are thankful for your peace because maybe for the first time in their lives, they're able to be who they truly are. And by doing that, you plant that seed and encourage that movement of continuing to wear their faith on their sleeve and not be afraid to share it. What we have is contagious, should be contagious. And we are fearlessly and wonderfully made. And we need to be fearless in our pursuits because this world is a scary place and we need to give people hope. And that's where I'm at. And that's why I don't care about what I share. I care, I, I share from my heart and I care who we can reach more than who we offend. Because the ones we offend have heart issues and they, they need, they're the ones that we've led to water. Now it's their turn to drink. So that was my, I guess my gospel sharing for the day. Um, if you are interested in learning more about God, you have questions, you want to learn more uh, about the Bible, you need help in understanding something, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can private message me anytime. You can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. And uh, don't be afraid. There's so much to be gained in a relationship with Christ. So much to be gained and nothing to be lost. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot to be lost if you don't have that relationship with Christ because you will end up in a uh, with Christ you go to heaven. Without Christ you go to hell and it's it's forever. So, it, there is there is great things to be lost if you do not have a relationship with Christ. So, um, good morning, afternoon, Miss Teresa. Glad you had a chance to join. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been awesome, and I'm so grateful I got to sit outside. It feels so good. I hate it when I'm stuck inside. <laughs> so I hope to, we hope to be sharing so much more with you. The Mountain Man has been inspired to do a lot of movies. I have videos. I've got a lot of videos to edit, but I haven't been able to stand in front of my machine long enough to edit them. Um, but after this whirlwind of things hopefully um, after next Friday uh, we will have uh, opportunities to get those out to you um, next Wednesday I'm gonna try to go live I will be in transit heading back home because I will not be leaving that area um, on uh, Tuesday night because I will not have the ability to drive another five hours because we'll have already been on the road for ten so um, I will be on the road, so I'm going to try to do this. I just don't know. I will try to get a better feel for what my uh, service will be like. Maybe I'll stop in a really nice park or something and, and do the live video then. Um, so I, I, will, I will see, but I'm going to try my best to go live next Wednesday. 
Oh, I lost you. There's been lots of buffering today. Have a great day. I love you guys. Love you too, sweet Diana. Praying for you. I am going to say my prayer and jump off of here. If there was a lot of buffering, uh, do know that um, when you watch the uh, replay, everything should be on there, I hope. I hope. Hopefully it didn't buffer me out and the enemy was cutting out all the good stuff. So anyway, guys, I love you greatly. I'm going to say my prayer here. Dear Papa, I just thank you for your hand on our family and all those watching Thank you for the many miracles and blessings and your love for us. I love that you give us guidance on how to be faithful and how to be trusting and how to live our lives so that we are honoring you. And through that, you are so favorable and honorable and faithful in the blessings that you give us. Your timing is always the best, and we trust that. And we trust whatever it is you're going to do in our lives. We thank you for the doors that you've opened for Austin and, and what you're going to do there. We also know that you've opened those doors, so we know that you will have your hand of blessing on him and safety. And that you will take care of him in this new adventure and the new walk for him. May his heart be wide open for you using him as a vessel in that environment. And uh, we thank you for what you're going to do there. We ask that you be with Terry and June, build them up, strengthen them, and reunite them. We ask that you be with uh, Diana and Craig in their walk and in, in the uh, health issues and the healing that needs to be done there. And uh, we ask that you uh, be with them in their hard walk right now and bless them greatly also for their faithfulness. And we know that your timing is best, so as they walk through this hard walk, we will continue as a community to lift them in prayer. Uh, we ask that you be with Tammy and Alexa today to uh, find an apartment that is suitable for her family and just uh, bless them and just be with the entire family with all the change that's going on. <clears throat> we ask that you be with Kelly and Mike and Courtney and just uh, bless their family as well for their faithfulness and trust in you and uh, the way they honor you as well and just uh, give Courtney a clean bill of health and we ask that you be with Angela and her family uh, bless her and uh, help her in being a continued light to their neighbor and uh, also help her in her managing skills you are the Almighty and able to do everything from the simplest to the greatest so we just ask that you bless her with those skills to help manage and organize her family and and with all that they have going on and I just ask that you be with Chad strengthen him and continue to use him as well as a vessel in in all that he does and just uh, strengthen him for this walk and and deliver him and and bless him as well for his faithfulness and I ask that you be with everyone else that's watching and joining and those that watch a replay. Bless them and help them in their journeys and in their walks. Bless, bless everyone while they're celebrating and bless everyone while they're also walking through the dark spots. There is so much to be gained from both places and we need to be able to see that. But also discern the enemy when he's trying to take us deeper into our, our low places and... and Remind us that we have the ability to just remind him that he's behind us and keep him there. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each and every one of our lives. I thank you for what you have in store for each of us and, and how you're going to bless each of us. And I just ask that you strengthen us all, remind us to put our armor on every day, and may we be showing God's love and, and loving up on others and, and sharing our, our stories and our, our testimonies as we walk out things in this world that we may be a light and, and make people want to seek you because of our goodness. And I just ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, have a fabulous day. Thank you for joining me and I wish you a really good week. May God bless you greatly in whatever it is that you're walking out. And just remember to look to him not only in the good times, but in your bad times too. He's there. And I should have reversed it. Don't just look for him in the bad times. Look for him in the good times. Um, look for him every day. Seek him every day. Uh, commune with him every day and fellowship. And, and uh, you will end up where I am. And 
as I grow, uh, I will share. This is an amazing walk, and it's worth sharing. So thank you guys. Have a blessed day. Love you all. God bless.